Oam, Modern Irish OM or OM, Old Irish, Ogum Am is an early medieval alphabet used to write the early Irish language in the Orthodox inscriptions, 1st to 6th centuries AD, and later the Old Irish language Scholastic Oam, 6th to 9th centuries. There are roughly 400 surviving Orthodox inscriptions on stone monuments throughout Ireland and Western Britain, the bulk of which are in southern Munster. The largest number outside Ireland are in Pembrokeshire, Wales. The vast majority of the inscriptions consist of personal names. According to the High Medieval Briatharogam, names of various trees can be ascribed to individual letters. The etymology of the word ogam or oam remains unclear. One possible origin is from the Irish og uam, point seam, referring to the seam made by the point of a sharp weapon. Topic: <inaudible> Origins. <inaudible> It has been argued that the earliest inscriptions in Oam date to about the 4th century AD, but James Carney believed its origin is rather within the 1st century BC. Although the use of classical Oam in stone inscriptions seems to have flowered in the 5th and 6th centuries around the Irish Sea, from the phonological evidence it is clear that the alphabet predates the 5th century. A period of writing on wood or other perishable material prior to the preserved monumental inscriptions needs to be assumed, sufficient for the loss of the phonemes represented by uith h, and strafe z, in the manuscript tradition, but probably f, from sw, jital, representing the velar nasal ing, in the manuscript tradition, but etymologically probably gw all of which are clearly part of the system, but unattested in inscriptions. It appears that the Oam alphabet arose from another script, and some even consider it a mere cipher of its template script Duel 1968, points out similarity with ciphers of Germanic runes. The largest number of scholars favors the Latin alphabet as this template, although the Elder Futhark and even the Greek alphabet have their supporters. Runic origin would elegantly explain the presence of H and Z. Letters unused in Irish, as well as the presence of vocalic and consonantal variants, U versus W, unknown to Latin writing and lost in Greek. Cf. The Latin alphabet is the primary contender mainly because its influence at the required period 4th century is most easily established, being widely used in neighboring Roman Britannia, while the runes in the 4th century were not very widespread even in continental Europe. In Ireland and in Wales, the language of the monumental stone inscriptions is termed Primitive Irish. The transition to Old Irish, the language of the earliest sources in the Latin alphabet, takes place in about the 6th century. Since Oam inscriptions consist almost exclusively of personal names and marks possibly indicating land ownership, linguistic information that may be glimpsed from the Primitive Irish period is mostly restricted to phonological developments. Theories of origin Topic. There are two main schools of thought among scholars as to the motivation for the creation of Oam. Scholars such as Carney and McNeil have suggested that Oam was first created as a cryptic alphabet, designed by the Irish so as not to be understood by those with a knowledge of the Latin alphabet. In this school of thought, it is asserted that the alphabet was created by Irish scholars or druids for political, military or religious reasons to provide a secret means of communication in opposition to the authorities of Roman Britain. The Roman Empire, which then ruled over neighbouring southern Britain, represented a very real threat of invasion to Ireland, which may have acted as a spur to the creation of the alphabet. Alternatively, in later centuries when the threat of invasion had receded and the Irish were themselves invading the western parts of Britain, the desire to keep communications secret from Romans or Romanized Britons would still have provided an incentive. With bilingual Oam and Latin inscriptions in Wales, however, one would suppose that the Oam could easily be decoded by anyone in the post Roman world. The second main school of thought, put forward by scholars such as McManus, is that Oam was invented by the first Christian communities in early Ireland, out of a desire to have a unique alphabet for writing short messages and inscriptions in the Irish language. The argument is that the sounds of primitive Irish were regarded as difficult to transcribe into the Latin alphabet, so the invention of a separate alphabet was deemed appropriate. 
A possible such origin, as suggested by McManus (1991–41), is the early Christian community known to have existed in Ireland from around AD 400 at the latest. The existence of which is attested by the mission of Palladius by Pope Celestine I in AD 431. A variation is that the alphabet was first invented, for whatever reason, in 4th century Irish settlements in West Wales after contact and intermarriage with Romanised Britons with a knowledge of the Latin alphabet. In fact, several Oam stones in Wales are bilingual, containing both Irish and British Latin, testifying to the international contacts that led to the existence of some of these stones. A third theory put forward by the noted Oam scholar R.A.S. McAllister was influential at one time, but finds little favour with scholars today. McAllister believed that Oam was first invented in Cisalpine Gaul around 600 BC by Gaulish Druids as a secret system of hand signals, and was inspired by a form of the Greek alphabet current in northern Italy at the time. According to this theory, the alphabet was transmitted in oral form or on wood only, until it was finally put into a written form on stone inscriptions in early Christian Ireland. Later scholars are largely united in rejecting this theory, however, primarily because a detailed study of the letters shows that they were created specifically for the primitive Irish of the early centuries AD. The supposed links with the form of the Greek alphabet that McAllister proposed can also be disproved. McAllister's theory of hand or finger signals as a source for Oam is a reflection of the fact that the signary consists of four groups of five letters, with a sequence of strokes from one to five. A theory popular among modern scholars is that the forms of the letters derive from the various numerical tally mark systems in existence at the time. This theory was first suggested by the scholars Rudolf Thernesine and Joseph Vendries, who proposed that the Oam script was inspired by a pre-existing system of counting based around the numbers 5 and 20, which was then adapted to an alphabet form by the first Ogamists. <laughs> Legendary accounts. Topic. According to the 11th century Labor Gabala Aran, the 14th century Oricep Na and Aixas, and other medieval Irish folklore, Oam was first invented soon after the fall of the Tower of Babel, along with the Gaelic language, by the legendary Scythian king, Phenius Farsa. According to the Oricept, Phenius journeyed from Scythia together with Goidal Mac Ethewar, Er Mac Nima, and a retinue of 72 scholars. They came to the plain of Shinar to study the confused languages at Nimrod's tower, the tower of Babel. Finding that they had already been dispersed, Phineas sent his scholars to study them, staying at the tower, coordinating the effort. After ten years, the investigations were complete, and Phineas created in Bela Tobade, the selected language, taking the best of each of the confused tongues, which he called Goidelk, Goidelic, after Goidel Mac Ethewar. He also created extensions of Goidelk, called Bela Fini, after himself, Ironberla, after Er Mac Nima, and others, and the Bai the Luis Nguyen the Oam as a perfected writing system for his languages. The names he gave to the letters were those of his 25 best scholars. Alternatively, the Ogham tract credits Ogma Mac Elithan with the script's invention. OGMA was skilled in speech and poetry, and created the system for the learned, to the exclusion of rustics and fools. The first message written in Ogham were 7b. S on a birch, sent as a warning to Lug Mac Elithan, meaning, Your wife will be carried away seven times to the other world unless the birch protects her. For this reason, the letter B is said to be named after the birch, and in Labor Ogame goes on to tell the tradition that all letters were named after trees, a claim also referred to by the Oricept as an alternative to the naming after Phineas's disciples. <laughs> Alphabet, the Beeth Luis Nin Strictly speaking, the word oam refers only to the form of letters or script, while the letters themselves are known collectively as the Beth Luis Nin after the letter names of the first letters in the same manner as the modern alphabet, deriving from the Greek alpha and beta. The fact that the order of the letters is in fact BLFSN led the scholar McAllister to propose that the letter order was originally BLNFS. This was to fit into his own theories which linked the Beth Luis Nin to a form of the Greek alphabet current in northern Italy in the 6th and 5th centuries BC. However, there is no evidence for McAllister's theories, and they have since been discounted by later scholars. There are in fact other explanations for the name Beth Luis Nin. 
One explanation is that the word Ninwich literally means a forked branch, was also regularly used to mean a written letter in general. Beth Luis Nin could therefore mean simply Beth Luis letters. The other explanation is that Beth Luis Nin is a convenient contraction of the first five letters, thus, Beth Lvs Nin. The Oum alphabet originally consisted of 20 distinct characters, feta, arranged in four series Ikmi, plural of Aicme, family. Compare Aett. Each Aicme was named after its first character Aicme Bith, Aicme Watha, Aicme Mini, Aicme Ailmi, the B group, the H group, the M group, the A group. Five additional letters were later introduced mainly in the manuscript tradition, the so-called Forfta. The Ogham tract also gives a variety of some 100 variant or secret modes of writing Oam 92 in the Book of Ballymote, for example the Shield Oam, Ogham Aranach, N.R. 73. Even the younger Futhark are introduced as a kind of Viking Oam, N.R.S. 91, 92. The four primary Ikmi are, with their transcriptions in manuscript tradition and their names according to manuscript tradition in normalized Old Irish, followed by their primitive Irish sound values, and their presumed original name in primitive Irish in cases where the name's etymology is known. Right side, downward strokes B B B asterisk Bedwi S L Luis L asterisk Lubsta F Fern W asterisk Werna S sail S asterisk Salic S N Nguyen N left side upward strokes H Uith J asterisk Azado D Dewier D asterisk Derek S T Tin T C call K asterisk Kosla's Q cert K asterisk K er X ta across pendicular strokes M Muin M G Gort asterisk Gorto S Ingetal asterisk G etlo Z strafe S W or T S R Ruiz R asterisk Rudsty Notches vowels A Aelm A O on O asterisk Osno U er U E A dod E I a dad I a letter for P is conspicuously absent, since the phoneme was lost in Proto Celtic, and the gap was not filled in Q Celtic, and no sign was needed before loanwords from Latin containing P appeared in Irish, e.g., Patrick. Conversely, there is a letter for the labiovelar Q, cert, a phoneme lost in Old Irish. The base alphabet is therefore, as it were, designed for Proto Q Celtic. Of the five forfta or supplementary letters, only the first, abad, regularly appears in inscriptions, but mostly with the value K McManus, section 5.3, 1991. The others, except for Amanchal, have at most only one certain orthodox see below inscription each. Due to their limited practical use, later agamists turned the supplementary letters into a series of diphthongs, changing completely the values for pin and amanchal. This meant that the alphabet was once again without a letter for the P sound, forcing the invention of the letter Pithbach soft B, which appears in the manuscripts only. E A Abad Oi War U I Ulan P, later I O Pin, later I Fin X or CH as in lock, later A Amanchal Topic. Letter names Topic. The letter names are interpreted as names of trees or shrubs in manuscript tradition, both in Oricept Na and Aixas, the scholars, primer, and in Labor Ogame, the Ogham tract. They were first discussed in modern times by Rory O. Flatharte, 1685, who took them at face value. The Oricept itself is aware that not all names are known tree names, saying, Now all these are wood names such as are found in the Oam Book of Woods, and are not derived from men admitting that, some of these trees are not known today. The Oricept gives a short phrase or kenning for each letter, known as a bryatharogam, that traditionally accompanied each letter name, and a further gloss explaining their meanings and identifying the tree or plant linked to each letter. Only five of the twenty primary letters have tree names that the Oricept considers comprehensible without further glosses, namely beef, birch, fern, alder, sail, willow, dewier, oak, and call hazel. All the other names have to be glossed or 
Translated According to the leading modern Oum scholar, Damien McManus, the tree alphabet idea dates to the Old Irish period, say, 10th century, but it post dates the Primitive Irish period, or at least the time when the letters were originally named. Its origin is probably due to the letters themselves being called feta trees, or nin, forking branches, due to their shape. Since a few of the letters were, in fact, named after trees, the interpretation arose that they were called feta because of that. Some of the other letter names had fallen out of use as independent words, and were thus free to be claimed as old Gaelic tree names, while others such as Ruiz, Uith or Gort were more or less forcefully reinterpreted as epithets of trees by the medieval glossators. McManus 1991, section 3.15, discusses possible etymologies of all the letter names, and as well as the five mentioned above, he adds one other definite tree name, on ash. The oricept wrongly has furs. McManus 1988, p. 164, also believes that the name Adad is probably an artificial form of Uber or U, as the kennings support that meaning, and concedes that Ale may possibly mean pine tree as it appears to be used to mean that in an 8th century poem. Thus out of 20 letter names, only 8 at most are the names of trees. The other names have a variety of meanings, which are set out in the list below. Beeth, Old Irish Beith means, birch tree, cognate to Middle Welsh bedw. Latin betula is considered a borrowing from the Gaulish cognate. Luis, Old Irish Luis is either related to Luis, blaze, or lus, herb. The arboreal tradition has carthened Rowan. Fern, Old Irish fern means alder tree, primitive Irish asterisk werna, so that the original value of the letter was W. Sale, Old Irish sale means willow tree, cognate to Latin salix. Nyon, Old Irish nin means either fork or loft. The arboreal tradition has Uinius, ash tree. Uath, Old Irish Uath means Uath, horror, fear. The arboreal tradition has white thorn. The original etymology of the name, and the letter's value, are however unclear. McManus 1986 suggested a value Y. Peter Shriver see McManus 1991 suggested that if Uath, fear, is cognate with Latin pavere, a trace of pi asterisk p might have survived into primitive Irish, but there is no independent evidence for this. Dare, Old Irish dare means oak, pi asterisk doru. Tin, Old Irish tin from the evidence of the kennings means bar of metal, ingot. The arboreal tradition has quealand, holly. Call, Old Irish call meant hazel tree. Cognate with Welsh Colin, correctly glossed as cane fee, fair wood, hazel, by the arboreal interpretation. Latin Coralus or Coralus is cognate. Cert, Old Irish cert is cognate with Welsh Perth, bush, Latin Quercus, oak, pi asterisk per quos. It was confused with Old Irish cert, rag, reflected in the kennings. The oricept glosses a ball, apple. Muin, Old Irish Muin, the kennings connect this name to three different words, Muin, neck, upper part of the back, Muin, while, ruse, and Muin, love, esteem. The arboreal tradition has finimhain, vine. Gort, Old Irish Gort means, field, cognate to garden. The arboreal tradition has edin, ivy. Neodal, Old Irish Jital from the kennings has a meaning of, killing. May be cognate to gonad, slays, from Pi Gwen. The value of the letter in primitive Irish, then, was a voiced labiovelar. The arboreal tradition glosses silkosh, broom, or fern. Strafe, Old Irish strafe means sulfur. The primitive Irish letter value is uncertain, it may have been a sibilant different from s, which is taken by sale, may be a reflex of per stone, or sw. The arboreal tradition glosses Drayan, Blackthorn. Ruiz, Old Irish Ruiz means red or redness, glossed as Trom, elder. Aelm, Old Irish Aelm is of uncertain meaning, possibly pine tree. The oricept has Cran Juiz, I, Octosh, fir tree, or pine tree. On, Old Irish on means ash tree. 
Although the oricept glosses Aden, firs, er, Old Irish er, based on the kennings, means earth, clay, soil. The oricept glosses Frech, heath. Adod, Old Irish Adod of unknown meaning. The oricept glosses Cran for no critic, test tree or aspen. Iodod, Old Irish Adad is of uncertain meaning, but is probably a form of Ibhar, you, which is the meaning given to it in the arboreal tradition. Of the Forfta, four are glossed by the oricept. Ebod, Old Irish Ebod with Krithic, aspen, or gold. From Latin orum, the arboreal tradition has fioris no edend, spindle tree or ivy. Eulian, Old Irish Euland, elbow. The arboreal tradition has edlean. Honeysuckle. Pin, later Ifin, Old Irish Ifin with spin and no I spin. Gooseberry or thorn. The fifth letter is a manchal which means twin of hazel. Topic. Corpus. Topic. Monumental oam inscriptions are found in Ireland and Wales, with a few additional specimens found in southwest England Devon and Cornwall, the Isle of Man, and Scotland, including Shetland and a single example from Silchester in England. They were mainly employed as territorial markers and memorials grave stones. The stone commemorating Vortiporius, a 6th-century king of Dyfed originally located in Clinderwyn, is the only oam stone inscription that bears the name of an identifiable individual. The language of the inscriptions is predominantly primitive Irish, apart from the few examples in Scotland, such as the Lunasting Stone, which record fragments of what is probably the Pictish language. The more ancient examples are standing stones, where the script was carved into the edge of the stone, which formed the stemline against which individual characters are cut. The text of these orthodox oam Inscriptions is read beginning from the bottom left-hand side of a stone, continuing upward along the edge, across the top and down the right-hand side in the case of long inscriptions. Roughly 380 inscriptions are known in total a number, incidentally, very close to the number of known inscriptions in the contemporary Elder Futhark, of which the highest concentration by far is found in the southwestern Irish province of Munster. Over one-third of the total are found in County Kerry alone, most densely in the former kingdom of the Corku Duaban. Later inscriptions are known as scholastic and are post-6th century in date. The term scholastic derives from the fact that the inscriptions are believed to have been inspired by the manuscript sources, instead of being continuations of the original monument tradition. Unlike Orthodox Oum, some medieval inscriptions feature all five forfta. Scholastic inscriptions are written on stem lines cut into the face of the stone, instead of along its edge. Oum was also occasionally used for notes in manuscripts down to the 16th century. A modern Oum inscription is found on a gravestone dating to 1802 in Ahony, County Tipperary. In Scotland, a number of inscriptions using the Oum writing system are known, but their language is still the subject of debate. It has been argued by Richard Cox in the language of Oam inscriptions in Scotland 1999 that the language of these is Old Norse, but others remain unconvinced by this analysis, and regard the stones as being Pictish in origin. However, due to the lack of knowledge about the Picts, the inscriptions remain undeciphered, their language possibly being non-Indo-European. The Pictish inscriptions are scholastic, and are believed to have been inspired by the manuscript tradition brought into Scotland by Gaelic settlers. A rare example of a Christianized Oam stone can be seen in St. Mary's Collegiate Church Goran, County Kilkenny. Non-monumental uses As well as its use for monumental inscriptions, the evidence from early Irish sagas and legends indicates that Oam was used for short messages on wood or metal, either to relay messages or to denote ownership of the object inscribed. Some of these messages seem to have been cryptic in nature and some were also for magical purposes. In addition, there is evidence from sources such as In Labor Ogame, or the Oam Tract, that Oam may have been used to keep records or lists, such as genealogies and numerical tallies of property and business transactions. There is also evidence that Oam may have been used as a system of finger or hand signals. In later centuries, when Oam ceased to be used as a practical alphabet, it retained its place in the learning of Gaelic scholars and poets as the basis of grammar and the rules of poetry. 
Indeed, until modern times the Latin alphabet in Gaelic continued to be taught using letter names borrowed from the Beth Luis Nin, along with the medieval association of each letter with a different tree. Unicode OAM was added to the Unicode standard in September 1999 with the release of version 3.0. The spelling of the names given is a standardization dating to 1997, used in Unicode standard and in Irish standard 434 to 1999. The Unicode block for OAM is U plus 1680 U plus 169 F. Topic: Neopaganism. Modern New Age and neo-pagan approaches to Oum largely derive from the now discredited theories of Robert Graves in his book The White Goddess. In this work, Graves took his inspiration from the theories of the Oum scholar R. A. S. McAllister and elaborated on them much further. Graves proposed that the Oum alphabet encoded a set of beliefs originating in the Middle East in Stone Age times, concerning the ceremonies surrounding the worship of the moon goddess in her various forms. Graves argument is extremely complex, but in essence he argues that the Hebrews, Greeks and Celts were all influenced by a people originating in the Aegean, called the people of the sea, by the Egyptians, who spread out around Europe in the second millennium BC, taking their religious beliefs with them. At some early stage these teachings were encoded in alphabet form by poets to pass on their worship of the goddess as the muse and inspiration of all poets in a secret fashion, understandable only to initiates. Eventually, via the Druids of Gaul, this knowledge was passed on to the poets of early Ireland and Wales. Graves therefore looked at the tree alphabet tradition surrounding Oum and explored the tree folklore of each of the letter names, proposing that the order of the letters formed an ancient seasonal calendar of tree magic. Although his theories have been disregarded by modern scholars including McAllister himself, with whom Graves corresponded, they have been taken up with enthusiasm by the neo-pagan movement. In addition, Graves followed the BLNFS order of Oum letters put forward by McAllister see above, with the result that this has been taken up by New Age and neo-pagan writers as the correct order of the letters, despite its rejection by scholars. The main use of Oum by modern Druids, neo-pagans is for the purpose of divination. Divination by using Oum symbols is mentioned in Tachmark Aetain, a tale in the Irish mythological cycle. In the story, Druid Dalen takes four wands of yew, and writes Oum letters upon them. Then he uses the tools for divination. The tale Doesn. T explain further how the sticks are handled or interpreted. Another method requires a cloth marked out with fin's window. A person selects some sticks randomly, throws them on the cloth, and then looks both at the symbols and where they fell. The divinatory meanings are usually based on the tree Oum, rather than the kennings of the Bryatharogam. Each letter is associated with a tree or other plant, and meanings are derived from them. Robert Graves' book The White Goddess has been a major influence on assigning divinatory meanings for Oum. Some reconstructionists of Druidic ways use Bryatharogam kennings as a basis for divinatory meanings in Oum divination. The three sets of kennings can be separated into past present future or land sea sky groupings in such systems, but other organizing structures are used, as well. See also Topic Oricept na en aixas Oum inscription Scholastic Oum Primitive Irish Runic alphabet Scottish Gaelic alphabet Topic Notes Topic Topic. References Topic. Carney, James. The Invention of the Ogham Cipher. Eriu. 22, 1975, pp. 62-63, Dublin, Royal Irish Academy Duell, Klaus. Runenkunde Runic Studies. Stuttgart, Weimar, Metzler, 1968. OCLC 183700 Forsyth, Catherine. 
The Oam Inscriptions of Scotland, an edited corpus, PhD dissertation, Harvard University, Ann Arbor, UMI, 1996. OCLC 48938210. Gippert, Joost, Halavacek, Ivan, Hamolka, Jaromir. Ogum. Eine Fru Keltische Schriftfindung, Praha, Charles University, 1992. ISBN 80-9014893-X OCLC 39570484 McAllister, Robert A. S. The Secret Languages of Ireland, pp. 27–36, Cambridge University Press, 1937 McAllister, Robert A. S. Corpus Inscriptionum Insularum Celticarum. First edition. Dublin, Stationary Office, 1945–1949. OCLC 71392234 McManus, Damien. Ogham, Archising, Orthography and the Authenticity of the Manuscript Key to the Alphabet, Iriu 37, 1988, 1–31. Dublin, Royal Irish Academy. OCLC 56088345 McManus, Damien. A Guide to Ogham, Maynooth 1991. ISBN 1-870684-17-6 OCLC 2418138. McNeil, Owen. Archaisms in the Oam Inscriptions. Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy. 39, pp. 33-53, Dublin O'Brien, Michael A. Ed. Kelleher, John V Intro, in the reprints of 1976 and 2005 1962. Corpus Genealogium Hiberniae, 1. Dublin, Dias. ISBN 0901282316. OCLC 56540733, CS1 maint, extra text, authors list link. Raftery, Barry. A late Oam inscription from Co. Tipperary, Journal of the Royal Society of Antiquaries of Ireland 99, 1969. ISSN 0035-9106 OCLC 6906544 Swift, C. Ogham Stones and the Earliest Irish Christians, Maynooth, Department of Old and Middle Irish, St. Patrick's College, 1997. ISBN 0-9015199-98-7 OCLC 37398935 Rank Graves, Robert Vaughn Die Weisse Guten, Sprache des Mythes The White Goddess, ISBN 978-3-499-55416-2 OCLC 5210148, several re-editions, but rarely available. Editions available in German and English. Sims Williams, Patrick. The Celtic Inscriptions of Britain, Phonology and Chronology, c. 400 1-200, Publications of the Philological Society 37 Oxford, Blackwell Publishing, 2003. ISBN 1-4051-0903-3 Thernesien, Rudolf. Zum Ogham, Beatrice zur Geschichte der Deutschen Sprache und Literatur, 61 1937, pp. 188-208. Vendries, Joseph. Literature Ogamique et ses origines études celtiques, 4 1941, pp. 83-116. External links Topic Description and history of the Oam script Titus, the Oam script and project Agamica Every Oam thing on the web Irish Oam stones Pictish Oam inscriptions Time team, Manx Gaelic Oam stone Oam in 3D project, a collection of 3D models and metadata of Oam stones.